The restaurant industry in Paris is buzzing after the inauguration of a new pedestrian square in a very popular district for Parisians and tourists from all over the globe. It is a golden opportunity for you, restaurant owners, to open one of the addresses that will contribute to the culinary diversity and reputation of the French capital. However, there isn't space for everyone and your opponents could throw a wrench into your gears. The Terrace Race is on! Hey, Meeple people, how's it going? And on today's vlog, we are going to be playing and talking about Dinner in Paris by Funny Fox. Sarah, can you tell us a little bit more about this intense, amazing game? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So this is a game for two to four players that takes about 40 minutes to play, according to the box. Um, in Dinner in Paris, we are restauranteurs who are attempting to open new restaurants in a city square here. Um, there's kind of a lot going on, so we're just going to give an overview of the game. And I will note that this is the two-player side of the board. The board is double-sided, and two players can play on this side or on the other side, as well as three and four players on the other side as well um and it, it's okay either way but we're just going to go ahead and play with the specifically two player side of the board today there are a lot of different ways that you can get points um and at the end of the game you're going to get points from personal and public objectives that you've been able to complete throughout the game as well as these three categories this could change every game we drew a, a random card for this so this may change but this will give us different points as well as um, points that we will get from building different kinds of restaurants and building terraces attached to those restaurants so what's going to happen is at the start of the game every player receives one of these player dashboards right here and there's a lot going on here visually but it's actually pretty simple to understand once you kind of know how the game works so in our player dashboards we add our terraces to each of these strips here like i've done right in front of me or Nick has done right in front of him. Um, and we're going to be uh, placing terraces from these different categories um, onto similar restaurants that have been built out into the square. Um, and I will talk more about that in just a second. The game can end in one of a few different ways. Um, in a two-player game, it can end when 11 restaurants have been constructed. Um, it could also end if no other restaurants could be constructed because of space constraints. Um, or finally, the last possible way it could be uh, ended in a two-player game is... I knew I was going to forget one. Hang on just a second. It is when... Oh, yeah. Uh, when a player has um, built all of the terraces from any two sections of their player board. So as we're playing, we're going to be removing terraces from these sections here. And if any two of these sections here are... Um, empty, then that is another way that the, the end game state can be triggered. When the end game state is triggered, we'll finish that round and then we will add up all of our points and whoever has the most points wins. So let's talk a little bit about what you can do on your turn and how you can get points. Um, so the very first thing that every player is going to do on their turn is draw a resource card and you can either draw one of these face up resource cards here or you can top deck if you want. You have to do this. There is a seven card hand limit, but you can overdraw and then discard down if you need to. Um, and when you top deck, you get whatever the thing is. If you draw from here, um, it is immediately replaced. And that's important because on your turn after you draw a card, you also have two other actions that you can take. And you can do um, the same action twice or you can do different actions. Um, one of the potential actions is to just draw another resource. So you can, I could take this one right here and then flip over another one and then take whatever that is as well, if I wanted to. Um, one of the other options that I have on my turn is to open a restaurant. So these resources here are actually used to open these restaurants right here. And again, that's shown on our player board. So if, for example, I wanted to open a frittery, I would need two potatoes. If I had two potatoes, um, I could open a frittery and I would build that along any edge of the board that I want to. Um, it's not like this is my edge and that's Nick's edge. We can build anywhere that we want. Um, and there are certain reasons we may want to build in certain areas. So for right now, I'm just going to say that it was best for me to build this right here. Um, I'm going to spend the resources required. Sometimes I may also have to spend um, money to build things. Like, for example, to build um, this frittery right here, I need two potatoes. Then to build terraces around this frittery, I need some money. So in this section here, I need just $1 to build any of the terraces here. In this section here, I need $2. And in this section here, I need $3 to build those terraces. 
When I build a restaurant, I'm going to take one of these little tags and place it on the roof. And that's just going to help us keep track of who owns which restaurants. Um, so I just talked about building terraces. That's um, another option available to you on your turn. So when you build terraces, you have all of these terraces in your player dashboard. Um, and you're going to be building these on related restaurants. So if, for example, I had a frittery over here, like I do, then I could spend a dollar per terrace that I wanted to build. And I could build these terraces orthogonally adjacent, that's up, down, left, or right, to that type of restaurant. If I had another kind of restaurant, let's say that I also owned a grill over here. In this step, I could also build terraces around my grill because you can build terraces around all the restaurants that you own um, as long as you have the money to do so. So I could spend a dollar to build a terrace uh, on my frittery as I've done here. And then for my grill, I could spend $3 to build a terrace over here. Um, as we're building terraces, we're going to be continuing to um, place these terraces orthogonally adjacent to other terraces of our color. Orthogonally is up, down, left, or right. So we can't build diagonally. I could not, for example, build here. I also couldn't build here because you can't build over certain um, the geographical things on the board. Like I can't build over these flower boxes, the lamp posts, these musicians over here, or the fountain. I can, however, build over these uh, pigeons. And when I do that, I get a card from this deck here. And that card is either going to give me a one-time ability that I can use in the future, or it's going to give me an ongoing ability that I can use for the rest of the game. Um, so that is a, another option that I can do is to build terraces on my turn. And then finally, the last option available to me is to complete either a personal or a public objective. At the beginning of the game, we each get two objectives and we keep one and then we put one into this public area here. So on my turn for an action, I can complete either one of my own private objectives or one of the unclaimed public objectives. And to do that, I just have to meet the conditions of that objective. Like for example, this one here, they say place at least 20 terraces. So if I have 20 of my blue terraces out here on the board, doesn't really matter where, then on my turn as an action, I can claim this here and get four points. You wanna be a little bit careful with the objectives though, because if you um, keep objectives in your hand and don't complete them, uh, at the end of the game, they'll cost you points as well. Um, so I think that is a decent overview of, of everything going on in Dinner in Paris. Like I said, on your turn, you start by drawing a resource, and then you have two actions. You can either draw another resource, you can build a restaurant, you can build terraces, or you can complete an objective. Um, the game ends, like I said, when you meet any one of the end game conditions. At that point, we add up all the points we would get from uh, a few different areas from completed objectives, like I said, or we may lose points if we have objectives in hand that we did not complete. Even if you've met the conditions for those objectives, you didn't complete them unless you spent an action to actually complete them. <coughs> Excuse me. We would also get points for um, the number of restaurants we've built. So out here, I get two points for every frittery that I've built. And because I've also built a grill, I would get five points for that. Um, and then we get points based on our player board, um, based on what we've uncovered as we go. So if um, normally these are filled in with terraces, if I've built all the terraces in this section, all the way to here, then I would get 10 additional points for building all those terraces. Um, we add up, oh, and then we also add up points from the end of game scoring objectives over here, which this is different every game. Um, and whoever has the most points wins. So oh, cool. that's kind of a quick and dirty overview of the game. There's a few other things going on here or there, including um, permanent and one-time use available income um, that you need in order to continue to build and expand and that kind of stuff. Um, and there's also probably a few other little things that I miss here and there. But for the most part, that's a decent overview of Dinner in Paris. Should we give it a try, Nick? Yeah, let's go ahead and jump in to Dinner in Paris. We'll see you guys midway through the game. And yeah, all right. Hey, 
Hey, Meeple people, welcome back. And now we are back to the mid-game of Dinner in Paris by Funny Fox. So, Sarah, how's it going for you so far? It seems to be game? going pretty well, I think. Um, I had a couple of things early game that let me build over Nick's stuff. So Screw me over? Is that what you want to say? Screw he had built over? a little bit mm. of terraces here in front of this restaurant, which he owns. And I just kind of like put my own tablecloth on his table and seated my patrons at his, his place. And I was able to do that again over here as well. Yeah, that um, sucked. Yeah. Greatly. Yeah. But it was the strategic choice. So It, it was. I do have to say that. I've also been able to complete an objective, uh, one Public terrace, objective. yeah, good. one terrace around each streetlight. So there's a streetlight here and a streetlight here, and I have one terrace around each one. Nice. Um, and I am working on my the, my private objective. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to be able to do it, but I think I may be able to do one more of the public objectives before the game ends. Cool. And I've been able to build a decent amount of terraces, which uncovers points as you build more yeah, and more. So true. we shall see. Yeah. I am over here with I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm building varieties. You've built a lot more like mid level stuff. Yeah. So that might end up catching up with me. Yeah, we'll see. I got a couple of private objectives I'm working on and I've built, I think what three buildings, your three buildings. Okay. Yeah. So then that's one of the end games if what we build you 11. You have four buildings, have right? Four. One, two, three, four, and oh, I yes. one, two, three. Ah, so. yes. Counting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so go. it's either going to be 11 buildings, one player um, building all their terraces from two uh, lines on their player board, or when uh, buildings cannot be built anymore over anymore. here. So I'm thinking we're probably going to end the game with the... Yeah, terraces, because you got a lot over there, at least in one, and then you're working on another. I might do that. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm kind of spread all over the place. I don't want to tip my hand too much, but I would like to work on a couple of, of like either personal objectives or um, some things that I'm like trying to get to work together. So hopefully I can get a lot of points for those kind of things. Yeah, um, and it hopefully will make up for not building as many of the mid-level terraces as Nick is building. So definitely. we shall see, I suppose. We shall see. This is you know, some of the buildings we have left to build with. So it's, it's pretty interesting with uh, all the buildings because there's a, a building in here it's like the most expensive one, but there's only one of those. And then the, the second, it's like there's only two of those. Even for some of the smaller mid-tier buildings, there's not that many that you can build. Yeah, it was actually interesting. I w I've, was considering what resources to take. Um, and I was like, okay, well, if I take this, I could be used for this type of restaurant or this type of restaurant. So that's good. But I really kind of want to build this type of restaurant. There's not that many left in the supply. So if Nick gets to it before I do, then I'll have taken this resource that doesn't help me. Uh, so there's, there's some interesting strategic choices here. Definitely. All right. So shall we jump back into it? Yes, let's. Okay. Well, we'll come back to you guys at the end of the game and do a little bit of wrap up before our final discussion. So yeah, we'll see you all in a second. Toodles. Hey, Meeple people, how's it going? Welcome back, and we are back at the end of the game of our Dinner in Paris by Funny Fox. And so I am crying in my dessert. <laughs> Why so, sir? Because the game came down to Nick with 103 and me with 99. Oof. So close. And there are two different areas in which I did this all to myself. The first is that at some point in the middle of the game, there was a face-up objective over here, a public objective, that I could complete on my turn. And instead of doing it, I was like, ah, I'll wait. I'll do that on my next turn. I'll go do something else. And I did something else. And then Nick completed that objective on his next turn, which means I didn't get to. So that was one way that if I would have done that, the game would have went in my favor instead of his. And then the second way is that at the end of the game, Nick was like, I'm going to end the game. And I was like, no, please don't. Please don't. Please just give me one more turn. So he did. And by doing so, I let him pick up 10 freaking points. And I got like three. So, yeah. yeah. This is like my fault. I lost the game. Totally oh boy. my fault. 
Oh, jeez. Hmm. <gasps> Goodness. But I really, I, I enjoyed this. There's a, there's quite a, quite a meaty game from Honey Fox. I wasn't going to say anything about my feelings because I thought we were going to transition. Yes, we are going to transition now to our final thoughts. So we'll uh, go ahead and do that now. Toodles! Hey, Meeple People, how's it going? We're back for our final thoughts on Dinner in Paris by Funny Fox. So would you like to start us off, Sarah? Um, sure. So I liked this. It felt like a beautiful, serene, but still challenging and still potentially cutthroat puzzle game. Um, I like the theme. I think that it was really well implemented in the mechanics, and it was a theme that, um, while adjacent to similar food themes I haven't seen before, you know, competing restaurant owners opening multiple restaurants across an avenue, I haven't seen that a lot. I think the only other game I've really seen that sort of thing in is uh, the Simon game with the chef's foodies, is what it was called. Um, that's the only similar theme that I've seen, I think. Um, and obviously there's a lot of games about food and stuff like that, but this one felt like it stood out from those. And um, I really liked the mechanics. I really liked the components. All of the Funny Fox games we have been sent for the channel um, have had components that are leagues ahead of where they have to be. Um, they've been so nice that all the components in the games have just been really nice and um it just completely like unnecessarily so but not to the point where i feel like they're overproduced or anything like that um i feel like the uh, there's there's enough of everything in all of the funny fox games to where like you're not going to see everything yeah. until you've played at least a few games and um this one was uh, a little on the long side, it felt like, yeah. but I enjoyed my time with it. It wasn't like I was just like, when is this going to be over? I was having a good time the whole time. Um, it just did feel a little bit on the long side, um, but I liked it. I think it has interesting decisions. I think it has great um, components. I think the mechanics are compelling. Um, I think it looks really beautiful. Um, so I enjoyed it. Cool. What did you think, Nick? Uh, Dinner in Paris was definitely one of their longer games, and I think it does go for quite some time. It says 40 minutes on the box, but I think if you include more players, it might actually run. And we tend but, to be yeah. a little bit like, I wouldn't say overthinky, yeah, or we don't really have, I don't think AP, but we do take a bit of time to sort of plan out what we're going to do, and we think about things a little bit longer than, than maybe some players might, so we tend to play a little bit longer than I think maybe other people might anyway. Yeah. But I do think the box time may be slightly underestimated. Yeah. Um, but we have only played with two, so maybe with three or four players it, it would change. Um, I feel like the game itself would change um, with three or four players. Now, the size of the game board does change with more players, so maybe the same feeling would, would, would be there no matter how many players there are yeah there's a lot of uh buildings coming in and out though and even with more space more players i mean sometimes we build two buildings on one one go around yeah and there's only it's a set number of buildings and there's only um like you know a few of each type so if it's a four player game and you know player one is attempting to build uh you know one of those buildings and they're gathering resources to that end and then like player two beats them to it and be builds one there's only one left then maybe like player three does something and then player four builds the other one then like player one won't have a chance to build something that they may have been working towards so i think it might be a little bit more competitive in a higher player count um however i was being pretty cutthroat to nick in our in our game today um building over his um terraces with my own using the special cards to do that and stuff like that and trying to like cut him off from from like scoring objectives and things yeah. like that. So it still felt like a fairly cutthroat type experience. Not yeah. It's it's a weird sort of feeling to me because I feel like it's a pretty serene game, but there's also like some competition underneath that that peaceful sort of zen building feeling. Yeah, I think uh, definitely with 
with everything it's it's interesting because you're building from the around it instead of like in between with the with buildings everything is coming from the outside and then you're going in with the terraces which is an interesting feel for uh for this one and yeah it seems like the board looks like it's like way bigger than it needs to be and like you're never gonna need all that space or anything but those little tiny terraces they do start to kind of like spread out over the whole board as you build more and more but yeah um i think this is a good one if you you know if you're a, a gamer that likes heavier games and also, if you like to figure out, like, sp a lot of spatial aspects were in this one, where you, how close was your building? How close can you build your building to someone else and then screw them by your terraces, which is, uh, you know. Yeah, that was one thing that I did. Uh, there was an objective about having, um, uh, having like, the I don't know, some number of terraces on a certain side of the board. And Nick had built, a, like, a pretty big restaurant on that side of the board. And what I did was I just plopped down a little tiny restaurant right next to it. And then I used special cards to let me sort of like just take over his entire p portion of, of that side of the street. So it was definitely like a spatial puzzle to figure out how to, to, to sort of influence his stuff the way that I wanted to. Yeah. But I like the theme a lot. The theme was pretty good. Yeah. I think it was uh, different enough from just the... You know, every day, you know, space, battle, uh, you know, war or uh, zombie type yeah. theme. Yeah, for sure. Which was really a Maybe was, that's nice... partially why it feels like a more peaceful experience. Because yeah. you really are just restauranteurs who are attempting to expand, you know, your restaurants throughout this, this Parisian square, you know. Um, and it doesn't, you know, there's not like, there's no war or battling or. It's just business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend this to people that like it more think your, uh, game that is, uh, is, a uh, um, a, 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 what tongue, not, not tongue twister, but like a brain teaser, a brain teaser. There we go. A little bit of a brain teaser, but yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Cool. Anything else there? Um, well, I just, again, want to reiterate that, um, all of the games that Funny Fox has sent us for the channel have been like. Um, to me have been like really nice quality. The quality yeah. has been like evident in every game that we've done for them for the channel um, in so many different aspects, just like the, the component quality um, there's spot gloss on all the boxes, which I think is just a gorgeous unnecessary extra that just really elevates the, the appearance and the class of the game. There's been plenty of everything. Um, there's replayability, added replayability because they've added enough, uh, you know, enough cards, enough stuff to make it so that there's, there's, you know, additional replayability. Um, all of their stuff seems to be well thought out that like the boards um, that we were playing with and stuff like that, they're all like work the way they should. And, are useful to players and things like that. So again, I just want to, I, I wasn't familiar with them before they sent us stuff for the channel and they sent us, um, dinner in Paris, candy labs. And was that it? Yes. Okay. And, and those two games, they're both like just very, very well produced. Um, and I, I think that they've definitely, um, elevated the quality of their games in ways they absolutely didn't have to um but they chose to do that and i think that that's something pretty special and i i really appreciate that so definitely i didn't care for the stickers though I'm yeah not, so uh, one one that. thing that was um a little bit um at first with dinner in paris is that when you're putting uh, when you're when you're very first open the box, those little buildings you have to put all of the individual roof pieces on, and each one is like a tiny little piece. Then you use, so like for the longer restaurants, you'd have to do like four or five of them, you know. So you had to put all the roof pieces on, and then you also had to put stickers on the restaurants um, on both sides of the restaurant to indicate you know which particular restaurant that was. That wasn't super fun. Um, but it was only during the very, very first initial setup of the game when when it was, you know, brand new out of the box kind of thing. Yeah. And it went pretty quick. We worked on yeah. it together. We were done in like, you know, 15, 20 minutes or whatever. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. But Not it, at all. But it, it did take some time. It, it did. And it, it, I mean, that's, you know, it's just it part is. of, yeah, it's just part of the very, very initial setup yeah. to some games. And, um, and even that they provided, uh, you know, 
nice, nice stickers. Yeah, nice even stickers. Even if you messed up, and, you can pull them off, and they yeah. were still sticky. So and they're like, they've got that like semi translucent nature to them, so that yeah. they look really good when they're on the buildings. And yeah. yeah. Well, all right. That was our final thoughts, and this was our vlog on Dinner in Paris by Funny Fox. We hope you all enjoyed it, and stay tuned for more content. Well, until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Toodles!